Tucked away in a remote corner of northwest England is one of the most controversial nuclear sites in the world. Sellafield is the birthplace of the British nuclear industry and also the site of its worst disaster. It was here the UK raced to enrich uranium for a nuclear bomb at the dawn of the Cold War, storing dangerous toxic waste in ponds that are now decaying. This is a place you do not want to fall in. They've been storing nuclear waste here since the 1950s. This is just one area on this site. There are other places where people can't even go. Now, 60 years later, robots are being built to clean up the mess. With billions of dollars being invested, this sleepy area of England has become an unexpected breeding ground for technology. Sellafield was chosen for its isolation, wedged between the Irish Sea and the Scottish border. It's a city unto itself. Over 10,000 people work here. This is a heavily restricted area, and it's rare to get access. Britain's early nuclear program left a toxic legacy. In the 1950s, the priority was getting the bomb, not what to do with the waste. It definitely wasn't designed for decommissioning. It, it was designed as part of that, that race, so it was put up very, very quickly. Uh, so some of the challenges we're, we're seeing is how do we get material out of uh, places where it was never designed to be removed from. It's hard to overstate the scope of the problem. The site is a patchwork with modern facilities sitting next to others that are contaminated and decades old. Facilities are degrading and therefore there is a time imperative. No single incident is more controversial than the wind scale reactor fire in 1957. And the milk from 200 square miles of farmland is condemned as radioactive. The plant's core burned for three days. It came very close to a Chernobyl-like meltdown. The area was sealed up and its core still hasn't been dealt with. We're at the National Nuclear Laboratory where they're working on technology to clean up the mess at Sellafield. These huge robotic arms usually build cars. Now they're taking on a much more dangerous task. Sellafield hopes to use them to chop up radioactive material and remove it from the site. It's hard. It moves slowly. Humans are at the controls for now, but the goal is to turn the job of nuclear cleanup over to the robots. I think the, the biggest thing is it's not necessarily the mechanical devices, the arms which you see now. It's more about the, uh, the computers behind it, the development of artificial intelligence, systems that can learn from their environment and fundamentally pull the operators further away from the hazardous part of the task. Around the world, some of the most contaminated sites are turning to Sellafield technology for help. Radiation levels now are rising at the Fukushima nuclear plant. Createch, a small English startup, is building drones packed with cameras and sensors. It started out working with Sellafield, but caught the attention of Japanese authorities. They've hired the company to develop technology to map the most contaminated and dangerous areas of the Fukushima site. This doesn't look like a drone you can just buy off the shelf. No, so th this drone is specifically designed to operate in really hazardous environments like nuclear power plants, where you don't want to send people. This quadcopter is autonomous and already using artificial intelligence to see and think for itself. If successful, its technology will provide vital information for the Japanese cleanup. It's not the, the physical substance, it, it's what's inside this section of the drone where you have a, a, a brain, if you like, which is capable of perceiving its environment in, in three dimensions and then making its own plans for how to move and act within that 3D environment to do what a person would do if the person was there. Drones can only see the problems. Other robots are gonna to have to get their hands dirty. This guy costs about a half million dollars and looks straight out of an episode of Robot Wars. We specialize in sending uh, equipment where people traditionally can't go. This is a prototype from Fourth Engineering. It will use what's known as swarm technology, where robots work as a team. This could be a real breakthrough. Different robots working together with no need for humans at the controls. The robot will be intelligent enough not only to, to know how to walk, where to walk, and, and how to handle itself, but it'll, it'll be able to communicate with several other robots, 20 or 30 different robots, and communicate with them knowing where they are and what they're doing as well. 
It's not just the nuclear industry that has its eye on the tech. Oil and gas companies are also interested. They see potential in robots working in hazardous and out of reach areas. All these machines, whether on land, sea, or air, will play a critical role in Cellafield's cleanup. These aren't toys. They get at a very real, very expensive problem. Decommissioning the site costs $3 billion a year and could run over $88 billion overall. That's more than it costs to build a new nuclear power station. In fact, the Sellafield site is not scheduled to be cleared until the year 2120, 103 years from now. If this mess is going to be cleared up properly, it's going to be because of the robots.